<sighs> all right you guys we're out here on the lake and now i posted a video you know me fishing using forward facing sonar and that's what i'm out here doing today just trying to see if i can't get some good footage eventually i'm going to get some footage of my screen and everything right now I'm, i mean there's a lot of fish around i haven't caught one i had one hit the crankbait one hit the um jerkbait but i got a whole bunch of different rods up here and i'm going to go through them all put them on the screen show you fish behavior and show them how they act so hope you guys enjoy it and hopefully we can get some fish catches because they're being extremely stingy right now it's early maybe the bite will pick up later in the day but they just haven't been committing a lot of chasing but we're gonna give it a try all right finally just got our first fish took a while but there's a school of them here and I got them on the six inch spoon all right you guys I switched my crankbait to a smaller crankbait still dies pretty deep I want to keep this crankbait above their head still but maybe a smaller profile will get them to make that extra five inches that extra commit because they're obviously wanting to chase to the surface too oh look at them get it away i'm going to pull them over here i don't want that i've seen fish bust but i'm on the camera i would be casting these fish that are busting it's just I'm trying to show you guys these fish and how i go about searching for these fish and just how they behave and what you learn about with the fish behavior you can be around a ton of fish just not at the right time but I try to see them far away and make a long cast with that crankbait so it gives them a longer time to chase after like see like if maybe he'll commit if see it's just they know I mean look at them looking at it it's just floating there I mean they're so dialed in on what they're eating it doesn't matter what you throw at them like see he came up chased it i mean this is great great footage right here it'd be nice if i was catching them but it's also just a tough time of year um i knew i was gonna be it was gonna be iffy coming out here but once it starts cooling off and these fish get more stable I mean, look at that. <laughs> They're just like, I mean, you got 10, that's all bass looking at a crankbait floating in front of their face. <laughs> but can't get them to bite it, you know? Occasionally you can trick one, get one to kind of react and over, it's almost like just trying to get them to overcommit on it kind of like a car trying to break and he just you, you you don't break in time and you slam into the wall that's kind of what it's about with these fish you know i want one to come so hard that by like look at him by the time he gets over to my bait he can't stop and he just has to hit it with his mouth i mean you can try to finesse him with a wacky worm i was able to catch a couple that way a couple weeks ago but I haven't had any luck since then. Alright. So I got two out there at 40. Well, I probably got like 10 out there at 40. I'm going to sling the crankbait. I'm going to try to cast that, that jerk bait out there at 60. Now let's see if I can call them up. Some of these guys might come up. They'll show you exactly how far away these fish will actually come from. I know that, like, I know they see my bait. I just need to get them fired up. I'm going to keep trying that crankbait, maybe. It's just going through rotation after rotation. If I can find a fish that is five feet beneath the surface you know a shallow fish riding very high those are the ones that i'm trying to key in on the higher the fish is the better oh 
there they come chasing. You know what I'm thinking, guys? I'm sure you guys are probably sitting there yelling at the screen right now saying, throw a lipless crankbait. Well, here we go. But before I take this chatterbait off and put a lipless crankbait on, well, let's see if I can give him a hit of chatterbait. There's fish everywhere I turn, man. It's... I'm around a lot of fish. Just can't give them a bite. They're starting to get underneath the boat. I'm actually scanning almost under my boat now when I see, like, this is directly under my boat. Fish, fish, fish. Let that chatterbait sink down. Alright. There goes my chatterbait down to them. Let's see if I can get one to spin around on the chatterbait maybe. Oh, like that. He should have. He should have had that. I mean, he came hard. Guys, so far it's been a tough day. It's kind of what I expected. It's been difficult to get bit lately. It's summertime. The bite will pick up here in a couple weeks, hopefully. But my bait that I've been using that I've been getting most of my bites on have been this. This uh, eight inch or six inch spoon. But I'm only caught two on it. I've caught one on a crankbait, one on a swim bait, but it's tough. They're, they're finicky. As you saw from the footage, they chase a lot of things, but they just won't commit. They're just really keyed in right now on small bait, almost like it's fall time. You know, it's dead summer. I'm going to move the camera up front here in a second so you can watch them go after this spoon. I'm gonna try to get to that guy at 40. Oh, look at all of them. My spoon's going down right in them. Oh my god. Look at them go. I should get one. I can't believe that. I got all I got all spun around. It's really windy right now. The wind has definitely picked up. So this isn't as easy. I can't believe one of those guys did not eat. Thirty feet. All right, my spoons should be falling down right in them. Yep, there it goes, right above them. I'm gonna let it fall right through them. And then I'm gonna rip it. got one. Oh yeah. Oh that's a good one. Oh. Got one. <laughs> Hooked him in the tail. This is... There we go. Not a giant. God, he felt like a giant. But there we go. Just like that on the flutter spoon. The second I got in that tree and ripped it around, I guess he spun on it. And I happened to get him. But, oh man, he felt like a giant. So you kind of got to see the footage on the screen. And then you also got to see the fish catch and kind of see how the fish react. So, I mean, that was... That actually worked out very good. It's not easy to put the camera up here and be able to get a fish catch, especially right now when it's so finicky. 
Well, that was awesome, guys. I hope you enjoyed that. I know, I know, I enjoyed it because it's been a minute since I caught one. But again, six. That's a six-inch uh, flutter spin. I think it's a Nichols. I bought these on a tackle warehouse or Bass Pro Shop. I don't know. They're hard to find in stock right now anywhere, just like any tackle. But starting to become one of my favorite baits to use. At the at the end of this video, you know, I'm going to show you my top like couple baits that I use. Obviously, there's different baits for different situations, but this is quickly becoming more, very addictive throwing this because I just love the bite on a flutter spoon. So that's awesome. I'm glad that worked out. You don't know how hard. <laughs> <laughs> how hard I've been trying to get that I mean when the bites on it's easy to get but the bite has not been on um, hopefully once it cools down and this summer heat goes away these fish will be a little more apt to bite maybe they won't be keyed in on such little bait but that was good guys good That's a good one. He's close to four, maybe four. Yeah, he's fat. Mm. Oh man, that was a <laughs> oh, that was something. <laughs> mm. Saw him at 50 feet, and then once I got close to him, I didn't even look at the screen. Sometimes it's best. Just once you know the fish, you got the fish's interest. Instead of fishing with, with your visually looking at the screen, just go with your instinct on how you normally fish, and just fish that way. Because you all we've always gotten bit doing that. So a lot of times I take my eyes off. Once I get the fish's attention, I'll take my eyes off that screen and just fish the bait. So there's a little tip right there. Back behind. Oh, and they just came up schooling. I kind of almost hit them. They should. Oh, look at them. They just, those fish just busted on the surface. Look at them chase. And I'm not reeling too fast. They just, that's just, that's just how those fish are. It came up and busted. All right, you guys, so I just finished up today. It was an okay day. I probably caught around 15 bass, and I kind of just want to go over the lures I was using. My three main baits that I like to throw for suspended largemouth, especially when I'm using the forward-facing sonar. These are the three baits that I'm always going to have tied on. And my first bait is just a, a small swim bait, a 3.3, sometimes a bigger one, sometimes a 2.75. This is a quarter ounce head. And I always have this tied on. It's usually when I'm going to cast at the fish first just to see how they are behaving. But again, that's just, that's a Kitek 3.3. Also, you, I throw Strike King as well. Another bait that I like to throw is a jerk bait. And this is just a Strike King. This one dives 11 feet deep. Sometimes I throw some that dive a little shallower. It just depends on the depth of the fish and I kind of just let the fish tell me what to throw. But as you saw today, most of the fish I caught today was actually on, this is a six inch, two ounce Nichols spoon right here. And I just throw this, I have it rigged with 25 pound, I believe this is 25 pound mono to 50 pound braid. And I don't tie FG knot just cause I don't tie FG knots. I just use an Alberto knot. And I caught all my fish basically on this today, just jigging it and just, you know, it's just, I let the fish tell me what they want. I had it, 
I would get them to react to a lot of things, but then they would lose interest. With this, they just seem to say, stay interested in it a lot longer, and I was able to eventually get them to bite. So again, those are my three top baits for fishing for suspended largemouth. And so I just kind of wanted to go over that. I think I got some good footage too. I mean, it wasn't easy. It was a tough day. I could definitely come out here in a few months and get some better footage, which I'm gonna do. But again, guys, I appreciate the support. Please hit the like and subscribe button. And please, as you can tell, today was pretty tough. So if you know you got people out there that say, you know, if you have forward facing sonar, it's kind of cheating. I mean, it's not cheating. You still got to give them a bite. I mean, they don't always want to bite. As you've seen from some of the video clips that I had in this video, a lot of those fish were chasing all every lure I threw at them. But, you know, I was only able to get bites on certain lures and I had to work for them. So it was a long day, but ended up getting some good footage, had a good time. So I appreciate you guys. Once again, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate you guys. All the support helps and I'll see you guys next time.